Um, I'm going to go through an overview of many of the tools that we're going to be talking about over the next couple of days. Uh, there are a lot of different names, and I just wanted to get it kind of all out in the, you know, at the beginning so you can kind of get attuned to all the different products. Um, and after me, uh, Dr. Tadwick Oliver is going to tell us uh, about what he's been up to lately. Um, so I'll start with Earth Engine, from the Earth Engine User Summit. Um, Rebecca did a great job of uh, telling you, you know, where Earth Engine came from and what we've been doing with it. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about um, how it works, uh, because many of the sessions that we'll be covering are going to go into the details of you know, how to actually do something with it. Um, Rebecca showed this image. This is uh, Borneo, and it's cloudy. And we use Earth Engine to clear it up to look like this. And the trick is clouds move. So you can just stack up all the images, since we have all the Landsat catalog. And at every single pixel, look for a cloud-free pixel. So you go back in time uh, and choose that one and bring it to the top. Uh, you know, in some places, it takes five years of data to find that cloud-free pixel. There are people who are on the planet who are very proud of that fact. No one's seen my location from space. But if you go deep down into the archive, you can find that pixel. You can do this with the Earth Engine API. And the Earth Engine API is the programming interface. Uh, we have, with Earth Engine, a graphical user interface that you can use to do classification, uh, to browse imagery. Um, that's a very useful tool, but we're mostly going to be focusing here on the API because that's how people write their own applications and methodologies. Uh, just as a reminder, right, Earth Engine is a big catalog of satellite imagery. Um, we have algorithms that you can apply to analyze it, and you can also create your own. All the analyses happen on Google's clusters, so you don't have to have a whole supercomputer in your closet. You can use ours. Um, there is this uh, graphical user interface I mentioned, um, which is really useful for teaching. People use it for classification. Um, and there are lots of examples of uh, people publishing work based on classification from the graphical user interface. And finally, it's an API, an application programming interface. Um, for making your own methods and also building websites that can call Earth Engine. So here's what you can do with Earth Engine. Um, you can get an image out of our catalog. Uh, you can, if you know the name of the image, you can get it. You can reproject it. You can download it. Um, and this is our public catalog. Uh, you know, we have the Landsat 8 catalog, lots of MODIS data, um, terrain data, atmospheric data. And everything we do is all the data we get is very driven by our partners, um, people who are working with the system. Um, everything we add is because somebody asked for it. And we don't just get any data set um, because somebody thinks it's cool. Um, we get data sets that people have applications for. Uh, so if there are any data sets that we don't have that you need for your work, let us know. We'll get it. It has to be um, publicly accessible. So we have to have the license to redistribute the data. Um, but if we do, we'll add it to the data catalog so that everybody can benefit from it. Uh, and it's a daily, it's a constant feed. So we like live data sets where the data are streaming in and we get the updates as they come. So the next thing you can do with the API is apply an algorithm to the image. Um, we have lots of algorithms uh, that are built in, and then you can use these to build your own. So there are you know, image math algorithms, calibration algorithms, classifiers. Um, and you can use all of this. There are over 700 functions. And you can use them to build your own analyses. And many of you, and many of you are. Uh, you can filter a collection. So if you have something like the entire Landsat 7 catalog, and you just want certain images that are a certain time and a certain place, um, maybe you have some metadata, you can filter that down. Uh, so if you think about removing clouds, what you can say is, give me the entire Landsat catalog, so it's Landsat 7, filter it down to this location. And the result is you've taken the 3 million image Landsat catalog and filtered it down to just those images for that time in that location. And then you can map an algorithm over the collection. So if you have an algorithm that detects clouds, you can say, you can say run this cloud detection algorithm over every image in the collection. And we call that mapping. 
So you, know, you look at the first image, you find all the cloudy pixels and you zero them out. You look at the next image, you do the same. And then you can reduce a collection. So you can take that stack of images where you've now marked every single pixel as cloudy or not, smashed it down into one image, and now you have a single cloud-free image. So this is basically the methodology we use to create the Pretty Earth base map for uh, Google Maps and Google Earth. Uh, and finally, you can compute aggregate statistics. So you can look at an area, ask what the mean value is, what the median value is, a histogram of values. You can also graph the results, um, and you can download the results. You can download uh, analyses that you do, like the imagery you do, and you can download the values as a CSV file. The reason that we're able to do really large-scale analyses is because everything that you do when you use these functions, these 700-plus functions, uh, gets parallelized across the, the computer cluster. So the basic idea is you take an image, we divide it up into little areas, each of those gets distributed to a separate machine. Each machine does its work in parallel. Um, it can be sort of a per pixel operation or a per neighborhood operation. The algorithm is applied uh, and then it's brought back together and you get your result. So anything that you do with the functions that we provide happen, that automatically happens. You don't even have to, you don't know, you don't know how many computers you're using, you don't wanna know, you don't even know, why, you don't know where they are and you don't care, it just kinda happens. So there are a couple of ways to access Earth Engine. One is through the Earth Engine homepage. Here you can browse the data and uh, you can use our graphical user interface to apply some analyses. But the more common way that people access it, especially you folks, uh, is through the playground, which is our uh, programming development environment. Um, there you can write code. Um, we have a script editor that makes suggestions. You know, you think you could do something a little bit nicer. Uh, and you can run it interactively. So you code up your algorithm, you hit run, you see the results. Um, once you like the results, if you feel like running it over the entire planet, you can run it as a batch job. It might take a, a while you know, longer than you want to just sit there. So you can export. Um, you can take a small uh, analysis that you've done in a, in a small region and export it globally. And then it goes into uh, Google Drive. Here's more about the uh, script editor. You're gonna be, if you're not already loving it and familiar with it, you soon will be. And here's where we are. So I'm gonna tell you with Earth Engine a little bit of our current status and what's been new over the last couple of months. Um, later, we'll, I'll, we'll go into sort of where we're going in the future. Um, but currently, we have about 5,000 people using the API. Um, scientists doing analyses, publishing the work. Uh, there are about 5,000 of them. At uh, any given week, about 1,000 people are accessing it, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, people are using it to work. So it's, on average, people are on it for an hour. Um, so it better be nice. It's a long time. Uh, and it's getting a lot of use. And the use is going up as more and more people are using it. And we're really happy about that. Um, here's some of the things that we've added this year. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, but they kind of fall into three categories. New algorithms, new data sets, um, and additions to the uh, development environment. I'll just highlight a few of them. Um, we just released a new classification API. Um, so people use Earth Engine to do uh, supervised learning classification. And we just updated the classification API to give you more control over how you run the classifiers. So now if you're using random forests, you can say how many forests you want to run. Uh, you know, lots of parameters have been, you've gotten more access. Um, we recently added export video. So if you have a series of images that sort of are changing over time, you can make a little video of those, which is really nice because people used to just sort of download image one at a time and then make a, you know, animated GIF. So you don't have to do that anymore. In terms of data sets, we've got some new climate data um, and we're working on getting Sentinel data in there. So that's coming soon. Uh, Sentinel 2 just started sending data. Yay! Um, we'll be getting that in once it's generally available. And in the um, development environment, we just last week updated all the documentation, um, thanks to Nick Clinton. Um, and uh, we added some vector editing tools. 
And now you can share your code in a repository. So if you're working in groups, as many people are, you can use a, a repository inside the playground to, sh to share your scripts. So it used to be that you had to click get link, and then you got a little URL, and you copied the URL and emailed it to your friend, and that's how you shared scripts. But now you can actually set up a shared repository, and everybody who you want access to your scripts can get access to the repository. And plenty more. So that's, what's, that's what we've been doing lately. And that's my overview of Earth Engine, which we will be seeing lots of. Now I just wanted to go through quickly some other tools um, that are sort of, we're going to be talking about that are related to Earth Engine, and I just wanted to get you familiar with the, what they are. Um, first, we have a bunch of tools that you can use to get information into Earth Engine, and we'll have some sessions on this. So the first one I'll talk about is um, Open Data Kit. So Open Data Kit is a tool. It's uh, made fundamentally from the University of Washington. It's an open source tool that, that we've been using. And with Open Data Kit, you can download uh, forms to your cell phone. You can make the forms. There's lots of flexibility in how the forms are made. And then you can walk around and collect data with your phone. And it's uh, automatically uploaded to the cloud as soon as you have an internet connection or a cell phone connection. Um, this is great for uh, validating, doing, you know, doing validation. Um, as soon as the data are uploaded to the cloud, you can then analyze them in Earth Engine. So we're going to have two sessions on an open data kit. So if you're interested in uh, you know, mobile data collection or field work, those are good sessions to go to. Here's an example of taking one of those points and looking at it in a map. And when you uh, upload the data, one of the places it can go is something called fusion tables. Who's, who knows about fusion tables? OK, about half. Um, so fusion tables is uh, kind of like a spreadsheet with geo information in it. And as soon as information gets in there, you can map it. You can see it on a map. And you can analyze it in Earth Engine. And you can do classification. Uh, so I think uh, Tanya is going to be talking about how to get information from uh, Open Data Kit into Earth Engine to use for analysis, uh, like this classification. And this is the graphical user interface. Uh, if you want to upload your own vector data, Fusion Tables is the way to do it. If you want to upload your own raster data, right now the way to do it is Google Maps Engine. Um, Google Maps Engine is a platform for hosting uh, geo data. It's actually going away in 2016, um, so we are currently replacing it. That's one of the main tasks that uh, the Earth Engine team is doing. Um, but for now, if you want your own imagery that's maybe private to you, not public, you can upload it into Maps Engine uh, and analyze it there. And I'm going to be doing a session on that called Using Earth Engine with Other Tools. So that's getting information into Earth Engine. Then there's a bunch of sessions on how to get information sort of out of Earth Engine in a way that people can access, people who are not Earth Engine users. Um, so there are three tools that I'll talk about for that. Um, the first is the Google Maps API. So the Google Maps API is how people put Google Maps on their websites. Um, you know, we use it in the playground to display your results. Um, sites like uh, Global Forest Watch um, use it to display map information. Um, Maps API is a big API for styling map information. Um, and we're going to have two sessions that are going to talk about Maps API and how you use it with Earth Engine. Um, another tool I'll talk about is App Engine. So App Engine is a way of hosting a website in the cloud. Um, you can program in a variety of languages. If you're doing it with Earth Engine, typically people use Python, since there are ways to code up Earth Engine with Python. And the idea is you have, if you want to create an advanced web app that you want people to have access to who are not Earth Engine users, you can build it up in App Engine. You can do the analyses in Earth Engine, get the results back, and display it on a Google Map with Maps API. Right, so that's how that all works. So there are going to be two, two sessions uh, focusing on that, how to use the a Maps API to display Earth Engine results, and how to use App Engine to create websites that do that, that are then publicly available. Oh, and the last one I just wanted to mention is export to Drive. So we have Google Drive. Um, it's a place to store data. Uh, the team has busily been making it so that you can batch export to Drive. So you can do a long running analysis 
that exports um, imagery to Drive, and then you can publish, you can just send out the GeoTIFF. Um, you can download uh, tabular data, and you can download videos. And they all, you can export them to Drive and then download them from Drive. So that's another place where you can make data publicly available, because you can just get the image and mail it to your friends.